Remember when those videos were popular? I do. Mm. Juggernaut bitch. There's still people in this world that believe that that's funny. Uh, what do you think about Jordan's theory from chat that if burglars can can get in, zombies can get in? Uh, it really depends on the type of zombie. Okay. It really um, depends. We were watching uh, The Walking Dead um, this week. and I'm not the- caught up, just so you know. Just so everyone knows. Do not... We'll if not, anyone spoils we'll not, it, I'll murder you. It's awesome, but we'll not spoil. But the phrase okay. um, that the zombies can't can't cross the water came up at one point. Like, they can't deal with water. And uh-huh. uh, so uh, my fiancé said that, you know, well, how are, what's the zombie situation like in Hawaii? And I said, I, I informed her about, about Dead Island and how that experiment has, yeah. has come to fruition, that that is not any better. But, um, yeah. Uh, she didn't. She didn't take that as uh, as zombie fact. Uh, she still thinks Hawaii might be the safest place. Could have been because we just finished watching Lilo and Stitch again too. But mm, I, I was gonna say Hawaii would not be a bad place if you play the uh, the game. Uh, oh, what's that viral game? Um, uh, where you create your own virus and oh god I, damn it! I can't I, the little the mobile game. Is that the, yeah, out, yeah, is it Outbreak? It's not Outbreak, is it? I, I know what you're talking about. Like, Contagion. Madagascar is always... Yeah, Madagascar is always the toughest island to take on. Really? Because there's no... You basically there's no it's, escape. It's because there's, what, like, no airports? Or you got to look at when it, you're talking about the zombie spread. You have to look at the access. I mean, you can be on an island, but if there's a lot of access to that island and people go there and panic then you're going to get a lot of that so hawaii could be safe but probably on one of the like I, the smaller islands at night like maui no you'd be one you don't mm. don't oh yeah don't yeah. be on the big island be on one of the tiny little ones and then you know hang out for a while just chill but i wonder what the chance well no i was gonna say i wonder what the chances are of the disease actually spreading there but um you know if you've got I mean, Hawaii is obviously a vacation destination, so it's gonna it's gonna get there by plane. But some of those islands, yep. some of those remote islands, mm-hmm. if you happen to be there, like how much would that suck? You're like you're on vacation for. They haven't done that movie. They always do the movie, the scene where the dude wakes up weeks later in the hospital. But how about the dude, the the family that was on vacation, and uh-huh. you know, um, I don't know, takes their private yacht home. This rich family that everyone oh. has pity for. And then they arrive home, and, and, and shit has gone awry. And then they're killed Yeah, I like that. Wait, no. That's that's probably what happened, because rich people are weak and won't survive the zombie apocalypse. That's what I was trying to get at. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. This is the Night Force Action Report from HorribleNight.com uh, for Tuesday, December 3rd, 2013. I'm your host, Justin Lacey. Joined tonight by Ethan Moses. Ethan, how the hell are you? I'm doing... Well, excellent, excellent. That, is the that was that was a well rehearsed answer. I, <laughs> I'm doing quite well. It's if been it, a very busy last few weeks, but uh, I feel good. I feel if it was rehearsed, we would have come up with something more clever, though. Uh yeah, that's probably true. It was a something ste- a little bit more quick witted, and then yeah, it was yeah. a steady no, answer. Really. It was okay. Maybe that's better. Maybe steady is confident better. even. But um, yes. So we are coming off. Um, well. Us Americans are coming off our Thanksgiving holiday. Mm-hmm. Sounds like you celebrated in Germany as well, though. Oh, absolutely. We um, we invited the uh, the people that were most responsible for Thanksgiving, our British friends, <laughs> over. And uh, my brother has actually been in town, and so we is the first time I've ever cooked Thanksgiving dinner. Uh, first time cooking a turkey. Uh, the sides I've cooked the sides, you know, in the past, and uh, we cooked. The most badass turkey that I, I think maybe I've ever had, and that may be biased, but it was it was unbelievable. And how, we, and how we many, spread. How many turkeys have you made? I'm curious. That first one. Okay. No, it's okay. That, that's was it, mo- that was it. That was the most badass. <laughs> it was. It was. It was. As far as I, yeah, it was the. I don't know. It was. It was delicious, and we were able to spread our American customs to our non-American friends, and they liked it. There was drinking, mm-hmm. there was uh, carbohydrates, uh, there was uh, drunken political banter by the end of the evening, uh, and then I passed out. So it, oh. was, it was awesome. I, I feel like the pilgrims are looking down from heaven or up You're from doing hell. It right. Well, probably up from hell. Yeah. And they're saying, hey, good job, guys. <laughs> and then you're just kind of like, I don't know if I um, really 
work with your right and wrong definitions here. We probably should maybe start celebrating a different idea of Thanksgiving because those pilgrims kind of, eh, I don't know. Some of them were probably fine. Some of them were fine. Some of them were horrible. But uh, but we don't think about that because we're too full. So right. Thanksgiving was great. No football, though. That was a little bit tragic. That was that was difficult. Uh, last year we dealt with that, but this year it seemed a little bit – I mean, it, it's been a solid year that, since I've sat down and watched a football game. Mm-hmm. Um, I was trying to think. The first, I actually just enjoyed it. The first game would have started probably like 7 or 8 p.m. your time. You might have been passed out by then. Um, you know, I actually made it till 2 a.m., hmm. but it was not in a state where football would have been enjoyable. Right. And then we'd have to explain it to the British guys because I don't – How do you – They kind of know, but – Like, how can you watch American football? Like, can you watch – I know the Super Bowl obviously would be accessible, but, like, are yeah, regular season a... games accessible on some sort of television package? There's a few things that you can do. Uh, Aubrey, one day, actually she found the Denver Colts game. No, I I lie. I say a year since I've watched a game. We watched the tail end of that. I'm at like 4 o'clock in the morning. Um, There's there's some apps and stuff you can do. I I don't remember how she – she knows more about that than I do, and that's that's surprising since I tend to be the the techophile in the the house. There's actually a sports bar that shows uh, the games, but they always show like the really shitty ones that no one cares about, you know? Yeah. But it's the idea of showing a game, and I think I would even settle for like a Cleveland game, or like a <laughs> Jacksonville. Even a yeah, even a oh no, I couldn't do it. Or I hate Jacksonville. your insert your favorite team here, derogatory. Dallas. Oh. <laughs> so, but that was the only thing missing from. It. But then that was great. Had a good time. So I got on a on a whim this weekend. I um so the the Pacers are really good this year, and I went. That's online. what I hear. I went online and I wanted to watch the Pacers game and I don't, I don't have cable. I cut cable a couple years ago. And mm-hmm. they only play on like, you know, a regional cable station. And uh, and so I was like, mm-hmm. you know what? I'm going to go to nba.com because that seems like a place to go. I would like to watch one of your one of your games, please. One of your can I get <laughs> one NBA themed game, please? Can, can I you. can I purchase some of your product? And uh, yeah. so they have you know an nba.com season pass and it and I was reading through all their stuff, and, you know, they've got online-only packages. You know, I was worried, you know, I don't have a cable TV subscription. Sometimes that stuff flows through there. I, I picked what I thought would work, you know, so I could watch up to 40 games a week on my uh, on my, on my my computer uh, online. Mm-hmm. And um, so I, I, I was trying to do that for the uh, Pacers game this weekend, and I, I went through, bought it. I think it was like, it's like 150 bucks. You can pay in some installments or whatever. And got it all set up and clicked to watch the Pacers game. It says, this game is blacked out in your area. The thing is, oh. they're playing in Los Angeles. And yeah. it's just got, yeah, it's basically rigged up so there's no way that you can watch your home team if you live in your hometown. So I immediately canceled it and got a refund. So um, yes. that was a really frustrating experience. So I think like you're you're pretty much out of luck if you live within driving distance of your team. I don't know if that would work if I, uh, you know, say I, say I lived in Seattle and wanted to watch Indiana sports online. Maybe that would work, but it's, it, sports continues to be the, um, the frustrating side of cutting, cutting cable. But, um, yeah, that's, that's what we always talked about is when we get back, um, whenever that may be, uh, we will cut cable, but sports is, uh, I mean, it's only one, it's almost like for me, it's like, there's like maybe, so there's four months out of the year that I watch TV. Like I have to watch TV two days a week. <laughs> yeah. And still, you th- consider keeping cable just yep. for that. Yep. So, yeah, you gotta have a better option than that. Um, on the brighter side, I did mention The Walking Dead mid-season finale is fucking awesome. So you should watch that. Um, okay, but, good. I, but but I also finally went to go see Thor: Dark World this weekend, and. One of my buddies at work was really hyping it up. He said it's his favorite Marvel movie. It's it's like watching, wow. it's like watching a Star Wars and a Lord of the Rings movie all wrapped together in one. And um, I didn't have really very many very much high hopes for this because I, I liked the first Thor movie, but I felt it was like kind of the weakest one. But I yeah. this was just a really fun movie, and I want them to make more like this. Like, oh okay. Um, I I would rather at this point have more of these isolated superhero movies where they're where the worlds aren't even connected 
than like mm-hmm. more Avengers stuff. Like I, I like yeah. the Avengers movie, but like when everything kind of came together at the end of this movie, getting to the climax, and you know the you know the Earth's fate is at hand. I'm just sitting there like you know Thor's 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 fighting everything off, and it's just like wouldn't you know Tony Stark or Bruce or Shield show up now? Because it's yeah. kind of hit that level where they'd probably be paying attention. Um, and uh, th- like those thoughts are always in the back of my head. And they 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 do detract a little bit from the experience, but like on its own one off superhero movie, give me more of these. Like Marvel continues to do a, he- a hell of a job. I was gonna say I need to see the original Thor, but that was that was the only uh, one of the Avengers did. universe. <laughs> I, I know, but I feel like I, I have to. Like you know, it's one of those things. That it's kind of like a completionist thing for me. Like I want to see that because I want to see the new Thor because I have heard good things about it. Um, I'm really excited for uh, Captain America: Winter Soldier, though. Like yes. that is the one yes. that I because I, I love the first Captain America movie and like the progression from that one to this one looks. I mean, they look like different movies because the first one was hokey, but in a good, fun way. This one looks to be a lot, uh, I wouldn't say darker, but I mean, it's a, it's a lot more serious. It feels more like the Avengers movie did, mm-hmm. and that looks awesome. But I feel like I have to keep everything tied together. I want to see uh, what this is all going to turn into because I just don't know how you outdo that last Avengers movie. Right. That was just really, really awesome. And I don't know enough about the Marvel Universe to know that there's like – I'm sure somebody out there that loves comic books way more than me is like, oh, no, dude, you have no idea what's in store with the Avengers. <laughs> and, and that's exciting to me. I think what Thanos, is that is that what is uh, that's what is that's rumored room. to be? Uh, no, Ultron is the... Ultron, he's... okay. And that's the universe eater, essentially. Right, right. And How uh, the fuck do you beat something like that? Uh, <laughs> with Snark. With Tony Stark Snark. Stark Stark. <laughs> TM. Stark, Stark, Stark. <laughs> is that, is that Lionel's uh, little friend uh, from uh, Snarf, Thundercats? Yeah. <laughs> Tony Stark, Stark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, shit, I was going to go go somewhere else with that. Um, yeah, I don't really know where the Marvel movies are going beyond um, this next batch. And that'll be that'll be really, really interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And uh, shit, I had one more thing I was going to bring up, but I must not... Um, must not be important because it's not in my notes. So <laughs> let's get to the video games. You guys, you and I haven't talked gaming uh, very much no. recently. Um, do you have any questions about those of us that have experienced the next generation of video games? Because you, we haven't even talked PS4. I've uh, I've been experiencing the next generation of video games for about a year. Now, <laughs> you did. <laughs> I'm sorry. I- <laughs> I had to say, I, I had to say it. No, I'm really excited because here's the thing: a lot of PC people will tell you that that's not exactly true because the floodgates of the possibilities of games have opened up. So, I mean, um, uh, Assassin's Creed 4 is downloading currently, and that will be, I think, my first real, true next gen game coming mm-hmm. into it. Um, so, I am, uh, I'm, I'm excited to get into that because this past week. Uh, Assassin's Creed was on like super sales, so I'm jumping back into that, and we'll, I'll talk more about that in a little bit. But um, you no, know, I mean I've 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 I'm excited that everybody's excited. I'm excited that um, we are. I think we're getting out of the Xbox is better than the PS. I mean, I mean, there's still some of that fanboyism. It's still kind of silly, but I think like it's kind of toned down a bit more that, or I'm just completely avoiding it. So I'm kind of happy with that. But all the videos I've seen, I'm really excited because. You know, I just I just remember the you know when Xbox 360 came out and me just being like, you can't top that. You just yeah. can't top that. And, and 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 for a while I haven't. I was like, where are you going to go next? And then you look at you know I think Dead Rising three, which people will probably be like, oh that's a horrible example. But looking at some of those videos and the amount of zombies on there and how detailed everything is, um, it's it just it's pretty freaking exciting. And I can't wait till that translates to PC because you know whereas we may have had the power on the PC for quite some time we don't have access to those games. Like, they, right. they, I mean, people aren't pumping these games out for us. So we're going to get, I mean, Dead Rising may not even come out for PC. Yeah. Um, depending on what goes on with it. So uh, we, we're still on the back burner a little bit. So this this whole idea of the PC Master Race sitting here being real pompous isn't exactly true because we're still going to have to wait on some of these titles, which um, it's okay to wait because my backlog is, is incredible. No. But I mean, mm-hmm. I, I've just seen mm-hmm. some of this stuff. It's just, oh, looks great. And it's awesome that, I think it's awesome that, the consoles uh 
there was a lot of I, I would say I, I don't know there was a lot of controversy with Xbox and, and definitely that that turned around. But I'm glad people are buying these things and all this. Oh fuck consoles! We're gonna be right. like I like that the consoles need to be there. I mean they have a place. I like PC, but I, I'm glad that they're here and I'm glad that people like. I knew everybody was bullshitting when they said they were gonna boycott and do all yeah. that stupid shit. Um, so it's cool. I, I wanna I wanna touch the controller though. I think mean, that's like the most like the, the PS4 controller is what I, I really want to because I was watching the unboxing video that we did of the PS4 controller. Are, you know that, that you where Josh milked the Dual Shock Four. Ah, oh, he he smelled it. He milked it. He yeah. It was a uh, it was a uh, it was it was but apparently it was the first we were the first people to do that. Uh huh. Yeah, it was first that? first ever. Like, no one even had the idea to do an unboxing video of anything before we randomly unboxed one DualShock 4 controller a week and a half before oh, launch. Because it was funny because Andy was is was legitimately he was, breaking he was, it down. Yeah, he's like very – like approaching with some journalistic integrity, you might say. Yeah. And then Josh tried Josh to make out. Josh just wanted thing. to lick it. Yeah, <laughs> he wanted to kiss it. He wanted to. Yeah, he wanted. I, at one point, I thought he was going to put it in his mouth. So I was like, but but that is. I am really curious about that. I, I just I want to see it. Um, I want I because Josh's eyes. Um, when he kind of felt the, uh, the 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 joysticks, he kind of had this look like, oh wow, this is really great. So I was like, oh, like apparently, like if it if it was that much of an impact, and I've heard from a lot of people that it's a lot more responsive and stuff, and that's good because I've got my 360 control, and I know that. I'm gonna be able to upgrade here soon, which I'm excited about. So, um, so which is kind of a really weird and like I'm not usually someone that's super interested in, in that side of gaming, but uh, I, I kind of want a new control, so that'll be a cool thing. There, I mean, uh, really like the DualShock Four. Played um, a a good amount of Killzone with it, and it, that's kind of I think the the first person shooters are the most divisive with between the Xbox and the PlayStation controller. Just the stick mm-hmm. placement, and I, I adjusted back to my PlayStation two days, so that was that was awesome. Um, I have not held an Xbox One controller yet, but I mean, no, so you haven't bought the Xbox One yet, have you? No, um, we'll see. I will I will get one by the spring if I don't end up with one before the end of the year. But um, yeah, um, but right now I still I'm still well. My latest math is, and we'll talk about these games later, but. Go out and buy a 3DS, uh, the new Legend of Zelda game, and a Wii U, and Super Mario 3D World, and you can get all that for less than an Xbox One in a game. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, I, yeah. th- the games are coming in the spring. That's kind of, I think, where where it'll really, that's where the conversation will, will really heat up, but but it's mm-hmm. it's great that they're out there now, and we can all experience them and talk about them, and um, you know, yeah. it's been fun you know, breaking things and seeing, you know, glitches, but also like having those next gen wow moments. I still think, I still think the Xbox one lineup has more of them just, uh, graphically between mm-hmm. I'd say rise and, and dead rising three. Those seem to be the two that kind of made me doubt my purchase. But, but at the same time, I really like PlayStation's platform and, um, I've been having fun with the games that I do have and Rezo guns awesome. And, um, but, um, they, uh, I, I am anxious to actually get my hands on Xbox One and, and yell at my TV a bit because it seems like the voice <laughs> controls have, have have come a good ways. But um, yeah. But but do you have any concerns about um, all of this uh, this this live streaming that's happening? People are now trusted well, with it. We, we we talked about this, and I and I I think we both made the point that. For the first few months, it's going to be really crappy. Now, I personally thought it was going to be crappy in the sense it was going to be a lot of just unprofessional people trying to stream mm-hmm. um, that probably shouldn't be streaming. And I mean, I guess you could argue that for a lot of people that are that were streaming beforehand. But we talked about the barrier of entry. I could not, in the million years, have prophesized that somebody would literally strip their wife naked on twitch to me i i when i saw that because i saw that there was some trouble like it was really cool it was really interesting because like, there was this really off. cool story of this couple that yeah. had been on there and start they modded this control and they had all this attention i was like good we did it. i was like and i like to be wrong i'm one of those guys that i make predictions i made a prediction about walking dead i was happy i was wrong that that game was good um 
I like to make predictions and I like to be wrong because my predictions can be somewhat cynical. And I had said, oh, this is going to be really shitty. I saw that news story. I'm like, thank God. And then suddenly it was just like, no. you know, you got some some weird talking to kids in weird ways stuff. We've got stripping people down and, and Sony – I don't know who I don't know who was behind. I, I guess I don't know exactly how you monitor or censor this kind of stuff, and I don't know if there was a way for them to even do this beforehand. But how in the hell did you not assume yeah. that somebody was going to take advantage of your <laughs> that I mean, game? I still think that it's down to the the content network, so Twitch, like to put yeah. up some sort of filtering system. But I was actually surprised. Well, and I haven't messed with it, but I'm assuming. By default, there are no parental controls around the Twitch app on, yeah. like, to just watch stuff. And there should be at least a, you know, a, a 13, 14 year old like age limit to to use those apps or something out of the gate, and or yeah. you know, parental consent or whatever. And then, um, and then filtering explicit content needs to come down to come down to Twitch. And they, you know, they're doing what they can. I think they, yeah. since then, um, so everybody that was. You know, streaming all this ludicrous shit. Um, most of it was coming out of the Playroom app because that's the one that actually gives you the full screen webcam. And um, so they removed the Playroom from their games list. So um, when you're playing that game, it won't get promoted. And uh, um, that's, that's at least their first step. But I don't, I, I don't think the fault's on Sony. But they should have had more foresight and work with Twitch to, you know, people can't be trusted with this stuff. So um, yeah. It- and it's not even kids. Like everybody kept saying, like, "Oh, it's kids. Kids are gonna abuse this. Kids are gonna abuse this." It wasn't. It was a grown ass man. And uh, yeah, I hope. And, and and I'm just. And and honey, if you're watching this, divorce that dude. What are you doing? You're better than that. That's ridiculous. I wonder what that the, is ridiculous. The follow. Don't do there. that. Anybody who's watching, anyone that sees this, when you're married, there's one person that should. Two people can see your your your, your significant other naked. Their doctor and you. That is all it should be, unless they're an adult entertainer, and then obviously that's a different situation. But, jeez Louise, that that was I was disgusted by that. And the kid thing, don't even get me going on the kid thing, because that pissed me off. Like, just leave the little kids, let the little kids play. That's what we do need an age gate to protect those yeah. little kids. Because, yeah. god damn. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, but you know, they they got it sorted out quick. Though that was the thing, though. There was, they were responsive mm-hmm. to it, and that is what has to happen. Because the last thing that anyone needs is for this kind of stuff to filter outside into the uh, the Fox News sphere and and, oh, and, yeah. and get even more heat on gaming. So we don't need that at this point. So, but uh, just my playroom so, looked fun as hell, though. I was kind of sad to see that I won't be able to like watch it. It looked yeah. it looked. I like that because. To, to me, that is something that I sometimes get concerned when people – when you're mixing young kids and games because I think young kids need to have a lot of opportunities and they need to be able to develop and they need to be able to decide whether or not they want to play games. Uh, but they need to have other things in their life. But that to me was – an interactive toy that got them moving and got them like got families together. And I thought that was, that's cool. And I really, really like that concept. Cause I think you had a video of, wasn't yeah, Lily, didn't uh, you use, you, Lily yeah. was playing with the, uh, with the robots. Uh, actually, like I saw, actually I saw Andy and Jason on our channel streaming the playroom app and that encouraged me to go get the camera. And, uh, cause that, yeah. doesn't, since that doesn't come with it. Um, and, um, I knew I was, I knew Lily would, just love messing messing around like messing around with those robots and uh it uh yeah yeah she we we set it up in in such a way that the way my living room was set up that she could she could crawl up like next to the tv underneath the camera the camera wouldn't see her and you know it's it's all augmented reality it's the room is just filled with these tiny little adorable robots that look like they're um straight out of uh 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 wally um and um and so she would crawl up, the camera wouldn't see her, and then she would just jump up in the middle of him like like God Godzilla <laughs> attacked all these things and just like entertained her for twenty minutes straight and she was upset that we had to turn it off. Like it was just oh. it was hilarious. And oh, yeah. um, you know, that I love I love those little moments. I had some of those with it brought me back to like the the release of the Connect and the Wii. Like those are just fun little moments to show off and you know, I yeah. like that it's kind of a subtle addition to the PlayStation. Like, you know, we're kind of doing this stuff too. It's going to do what it needs to do. I don't think people will really mess with it, but um, that was that made quite a quite a splash. I think that, uh, um, you know, my fiance stopped kind of, you know, looking at me a little bit sideways for purchasing that thing right out of the gate. So um, that yeah. helped warm that up. But 
I know. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's definitely fun with with uh, with friends and family. So, and I'm anxious to see if they cool. do anything more with that because you know I kind of made fun of it, but I'm keeping an eye out for the Wonder Book stuff for her. Like she's the perfect age for it, and mm-hmm. um, you know, see what the, where the Disney Infinity stuff goes, and um, you know, it's nice that that that's an option. So. It's it's yeah, it, absolutely. It's, it's been fun. I'm excited that, that that all that stuff is out and we're playing with it. So it's yep. a good thing. And yeah, it pushed those PC games forward uh, forward a bit. And um, let's see. Let's get into let's get into the games here. Um, you 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 mentioned Assassin's Creed. We're playing. We're both playing some Assassin's Creed. So mm-hmm. how the hell did you? How the hell did you after? All I have tried to help people with in the last year since my Assassin's Creed 3 review. How'd you end up with Assassin's Creed 3? Well, it's actually... I, I came to Assassin's Creed 3 through a game that I've really enjoyed playing. Um, so we Assassin's talked about Creed XCOM and we within a few weeks ago. Oh, yeah. I'm too nervous to keep my crew going. I'm too nervous to play... Uh, the last time I played, I had this. I had a situation. I mean, I have got some high-level guys, um, and I got into a situation where one of them almost got killed. And I, I mean, it was like, because I'm playing on Iron Man, so when they die, they die. And so I, I, I stepped away from it, and like literally, and it, it was so weird. But f- there's just enough qualities about that game that get you gung ho, but you feel kind of attached to your soldiers. I think that's okay. I'm sure people think that's dorky, but if you watch any video I do, I get attached to every video game character I play with. So I had to back away. I had to come away from that because I just I can't get back into it. I just don't want them to die. And so Assassin's Creed Three <laughs> was on sale for like seven ninety nine. Okay, last all right. Week. I mean, it was cheap. So I I tried Assassin's Creed One. Okay. Did not like it. It was just That's way okay. too slow for me. Um, and, and most everybody had told me skip it, read 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 up on it. Um, to me, three felt like the easiest gateway. If I could read up on one, two, and Brotherhood, three felt like the easiest gateway because I like that period of time. Um, it there's that historical element that that I thought was interesting. You know that they're actually trying to not that it's it's historically accurate necessarily, but they're trying to interweave um, the story with you know events that actually occurred. And I thought, okay, let's try this. And I thought the the I I think the whole I think Native Americans always make for really badass like got like like heroes, and you don't see that very often. So I was like, okay, cool. This is this is. All of this stuff is is is, is touch on, and I know that people had said it's not the strongest Assassin's Creed, but I thought because I haven't played the other ones, it should yeah, I should be fine. Um, and I gotta tell you, I have almost quit playing that game <laughs> five or six times. I don't know, <laughs> and I don't know if what the other ones are like. I remember the first one; it was like the tutorial missions. I was just like, you got okay, let me do it, let me go, let me go. This one is it was like. I mean the opera scene, and I'm like, okay, this is that's just the intro. Mm-hmm. We'll get into mm-hmm. it, and then I'm actually this dude that I'm not gonna be the for the rest of the game, and I'm him for li- I think it was two and a half hours, three hours. Yep. And then I'm like, and okay, then? he goes away, and then I'm like, oh, it's it's I'm finally Connor, and then no, I'm Connor as a kid, and now I'm playing hide and seek, and now I'm. Okay, and then fast forward, and in, 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 you know his village gets. Oh, I don't want to spoil it yeah. for everybody, but something <laughs> happens, and, he, it's, and this the the concept of you know vengeance comes into play, and I'm like, okay, finally I get to be him, and then nope, now he's a young adult and he's hunting with his fat friend, and I'm like, you got to be kidding me! And I go through all this, and it literally, I'm just now at the point where now you play the my game. hand is still being held. Congratulations! I haven't even no, I'm. I'm not even there. I just got out of Boston for the first time after doing something that's an important part of the story. Um, <laughs> I, I tell you, like it is, it is, it is. I I, I understand why they had to do. Well, here actually, if I was a, if I was an Assassin's Creed fan, I would be pissed that I don't have the opportunity to skip through that because I feel like a lot of those yep. concepts. And I could be wrong. You already know. Yep. Like you should more or less know what to do going into it. Um, now, for a noob like me who needs to understand those those concepts oh and not even to mention uh as um uh what's his face who's the uh who's the guy in the future god uh desmond desmond as desmond i went through a tutorial as desmond i thought that was gonna be the tutorial but that was the very beginning of the game and it was just it was like tutorial Tri- after tutorial triple after tutorials tutorial. are you sure so tutorials. this is the third game but it's really the fifth or sixth game depending if you actually own a vita and 
Let's see. Um, do you think they know how to play it after this first tutorial? No, we should give them two more tutorials. <laughs> I two <didn't> more. Really... <laughs> five, six. It was like a, it was like a tutorial. Uh, it was it was an orgy of tutorials, and I didn't like it. <laughs> that means then. <laughs> Now that the uh, light is at the end of the tunnel, I'm really super excited to play this game. Like just, I'm super just duper erase excited. Erase all that from your memory, and you and, 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 I, and I think it's gonna be great. I think it's gonna have fun because I'm really excited to be a pirate. Super excited to be a pirate because um, that game was on sale really cheap, mm-hmm. and um, it looks great. And, and again, I just as I just said, you know, Assassin's Creed Four is more or less my first introduction into the possibilities of next gen. Even though it was uh, released on PS3 as well as Xbox uh, 360, so it's not a true next gen. But there's features of it, but it looks cool and everything. I've read from the people that I trust. They say it's not an Assassin's Creed game, which doesn't affect so, me because I'm not necessarily an yeah. Assassin's Creed fan. But it's a pirate game and it looks badass. So before I get there. Because I'm still not sure how Ubisoft's development teams work, like how they rotate between whoever the whatever studio is focusing on which game. Because, but I'm with Matt in chat. He believes that Assassin's Creed Five might just be a tutorial for Assassin's Creed Six. Because it sounds, <laughs> cause it sounds like to me you have now played the tutorials of from Assassin's Creed Three and anticipation of playing Assassin's Creed Four. So that's kind of funny. Do you think you'll stick with? Yeah. Th- do you think you'll stick? With three anymore? Yeah, because okay. because I, I I'm at the point that I'm I'm okay. getting I'm almost set. They've almost set you're, me free. You're and, get, I, you're, I, I like it. You're gonna get into the meat where it is enjoyable to play. I mean, I did put yeah. forty plus hours in that game. Um, okay. I there is the the payoff for that game is is just it's just not there. It's but it, it's fine. It just never it just never has that climax to me. So, mm-hmm. um, but when when it's all said and done, that meaty Assassin's Creed experience, it does that well. So, um, yeah. And it probably looks pretty damn nice on your computer, too. So, uh, it, it, it looks good. It, it plays well. And I think the worst case scenario, I play it for a while. Um, if I get tired of it, I, I become a pirate. I jump into my pirate yep. boat with my pirate friends, put on my pirate shoes, and just read the wiki. Because I, I read, that's what I spent today doing. I read what has it's, been happening. It, and That's a shame. Pretty too. convoluted, pretty confusing. I, I, I didn't realize that Assassin's Creed storyline was so weird. It is, I, and, I, and now it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they just kind of they yeah. threw it out the window. Yeah. No, I mean, like they didn't, but I gave up on it, so I, I've, let, I've let go. <laughs> like... I've yeah. let go. Oh, I'm playing, giving oh, a shit I'm about playing Desmond. Three. I'm playing three as if like Desmond doesn't exist. Like as far as I'm concerned, this is just a tale of a young, um, half-blooded Native American boy getting revenge, yep. and that's awesome. Yeah. Like, to me, that's all I fucking need. You yep. know, and he, and that tomahawk and that knife comment, it it it, it, it feels good. Uh, the controls were a little bit weird at first, but I think I got it. I think I'm in. So yeah, uh, I'm excited. I'm actually really excited. So yeah, I um well documented my uh, disdain for now it's turned into disdain apparently for Assassin's Creed 3 I just felt kind of betrayed by it I guess by the end because I really wanted to love that game and but you played all of them I mean how many hours do you think I've played, played all of them but Revelations I did not play the third Assassin's Creed 2 um, but uh, oh, I wait there was a third Assassin's so Creed there was Assassin's Creed 2 Brotherhood then Revelations oh, Revelations is old it. Ezio but Ezio is still He's the most fleshed out of the assassins. He's an, an awesome character. However, I did start Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag because I got on the pirate boat train. Boat train. Um, boat train. Because I am not 100%. playing this as an Assassin's Creed game. I'm playing this as a badass pirate game. And so I was mm-hmm. super excited to get into it. And I read enough hype for it that I, I finally caved and, and ended up getting on the PC. And out of the gate, Edward, the 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 assassin in this game, he... Um, I like him. He's, I don't expect much from him, but he's kind of an asshole. And I, mm. after Connor's kind of flat personality, I, uh, I, 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 I was okay with that. He, you know, right out of the gate starts calling um, somebody he's chasing down a shit bird. So that got my attention. That was fun. <laughs> um, but um, so I'm about three hours into it and kind of, I, I think this won't be the case for everybody. But I'm three hours into it and I haven't really got to the pirating yet because I got to the first 
I got to the first town and did my Assassin's Creed thing of, like, I'm going to collect everything. So it's kind of my fault. Because I think mm-hmm. if I just stuck to the missions, I could get out and do the open world boating and and become a pirate and, and run with it. So um, I'm going to play more tonight after the show, and I anticipate really getting the pirating stuff. And um, hopefully, you know... My enthusiasm for that is rewarded, but but so far it's just been kind of like, no, this is a you know this is the best put together Assassin's Creed game yet, but I haven't played my pirate game yet. So um, mm-hmm. although it di- it didn't t- tutorialize you to death, it it throws you kind of right in there, which is good. But okay. but it also just yeah. threw me into a city and just gave me all the here's all the stuff you can do, and I was like, I need to go do this stuff because I don't have self control and I need to collect everything. And yeah. oh man, but it's fun to have the I like. All the pirates dual wield uh, swords, and they they have their pistols. And um, I've been playing it more as an action game, and he's been beating the shit out of dudes, and it's really pretty looking at the same time. So, yeah, um, it does look good. Yes, looks looks great. Um, what are you playing it on? Playing it on the PC. I thought about getting it for oh, the. Yeah, uh, okay. I almost got it for the PS4, but just decided in the end that a PC made more sense because. Um, I'm probably gonna, I'm probably gonna end up using the next gen consoles just for console exclusives. It it looks like, but um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I, like it's kind of at this point I'm putting I'm almost blocking Assassin's Creed three out of my head, like because I enjoy the Assassin's Creed gameplay, and mm-hmm. I just want there to be more payoff to my actions. I want more ups and downs to the drama in the games. I feel like, you know, I feel like in open world games or games like you know Saints Row. Uh, for instance, uh, in three and four, the story missions were all just a blast to play through. Like the just the stories themselves, the drama, and they they managed to overshadow the ridiculous action, and it was still just enjoyable yeah. to watch. And Assassin's Creed has never been a series where that has had that good of writing and that good of drama. And I, I mm-hmm. that's what it's missing. And if they they've they've done a little bit better job to this point. Um, but that's where I, what I think will take that franchise to the next level because the gameplay is there, but just make it more mm-hmm. dramatic and make me, you know, maybe jump out of my chair and ex- and get excited for to do shit. So, um, yeah. And also, while I was sneaking up on the first guys to kill, kill, I ran across two giant sea turtles that I think were mating next to me, and that made me laugh. So that happens too because all the Did that's you- what Far Cry Three team has brought to the table is. Will you, will, will you uh, please show up about 60 days later and make sure that they're young and gets out <laughs> to the ocean? Because there's de- that's definitely a very uh, uh, you know dangerous time as a young sea turtle. And, and I think they're kind of close to extinction, so we got to save those. Everybody get out and save those sea turtles. That's what we're trying to say. But speaking of game pitches... <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. like, the Assassin's Creed games always go out of their way to talk about how... Um, you know, it's the games are developed by people of different religions and creeds. Like, it'd be not, it's nice to see some, some animal activism maybe uh, behind the messages here. So I see that message when I'm first, like when I first start the game up, and I think, okay, they're going to they're going to push the envelope in some way or another. Is is that the case, or are they just really concerned? Uh... Like I, I guess I, I guess I don't understand why they would clarify that they are all from different unless they go in and then suddenly they're just like knocking like the whole races and religions and and no i think it was just i mean i don't think they ever like tow those lines but i think it's just to protect themselves especially with i don't know with the first games kind of set you know in the in the crusades and that kind of thing that they yeah they were skirting some some interesting narrative territory there i think they've gotten away from that stuff i think it's got a little bit more fictionalized but still like you know there's there's some you're on some interesting sides during that revolutionary war i don't really know where the yep. black flag story is going to go but like there were you know you know there's some interesting takes of george washington in that <laughs> in that game and then also you know uh of the british troops and that sort of thing so and not to mention all yep. the native american stuff so um yep i think they're just being overly overly cautious i would imagine so gotcha well there's nothing wrong with that that's a good thing mm-hmm. good good job ubi good job oobs Good job, Oobs. We're on, yeah, we're on a first name basis. Yeah. <laughs> um, anything else you you've been playing? So I've been um, I've been playing a little bit of Contagion. Okay. Which is uh, another zombie game. <laughs> um, so I talked about no more, and it's in beta stage. So I'm not, I'm going to go into to beta or or I, I guess it's, 
early or access. Ba- it's it's it, it's considered beta, but it's in the early access program, and, and that's definitely a, you know so, something I wrote so about today, which a lot of people are confused on. So we're in agreement um, that the early access is the overarching term for these games that you can pay for that may yeah, be in alpha, before, may yeah. be in beta, or whatever they, yeah, whatever yeah. other Greek letter they would like to assign to it. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna say because I can't, I just can't attribute it just to Steam because Steam can't take that umbrella term. Like yeah. it's, it's good for them to grab that, but I, I mean to describe anything, I don't want to, I don't want to describe to someone. Well, I'm playing the alpha or the beta. I'm playing the early act. I have early access to a title, and I'm currently playing at this point. Um, makes it easier right now. And and, and Contagion was actually a game that I didn't think that I was interested in because I had no more room in hell and mm-hmm. that scratch and itch that I had. Um, but Contagion actually uh, kind of toes the line between Left 4 Dead and No More Room in Hell. So it's kind of interesting to have the, this, these three levels of multiplayer cooperative zombie games. You know, So Left 4 Dead is the arcade one. Uh, no More Room in Hell is much more difficult, much more uh, realistic in, in terms of what they're working with. Contagion has, has kind of a happy medium, and it feels a lot like No More Room in Hell, um, way more polished. Um, and it looks to have a lot more. Now, now granted, it's a, it, you have to pay for it as opposed to normal room in hell is free, which is great. <laughs> it's free. It's, so don't, I mean, I, I, it's really tough to compare at that point. But Free rent um, in hell. I, I've really enjoyed what it's doing. Um, I think that I, it's, it's always nice to have, you know, a multitude of zombie games to switch between. But I think this one is going to be, uh, probably a little bit more popular than Normal Room in Hell, based entirely yeah. on the fact that it is a little bit easier to get into. It's not as um, uh, it doesn't beat you up as bad, and um, it, it just looks it looks nice. It looks real good. I mean, the zombies when you shoot them in the head, their heads pop. I mean, it, it's mm-hmm. like it's pretty interesting, and, and it's cool because they have multiple modes. Um, they have like a deathmatch mode where you're fighting people, but there's also zombies there. They have a mode that you're just doing objectives, and the objectives change every time you reload a map. And they also have a mode where you're basically a rescue team. And so you're in this neighborhood, which I thought was awesome. You're in this neighborhood. You've got a little PDA, which is your map. You pull it up, and it guides you to survivors. And so you have to go through this neighborhood as these zombies are attacking, you know, killing zombies, trying to save people and getting them to the uh, to the evacuation zone, which was was really cool and really tense because I've I've not yet played it with people. I've been playing it by myself, and so I always like you know I'll walk in these rooms. And I'll be like, okay, I'm here. You're safe. And then like the whole house gets mobbed by zombies. I'm like, oh, you're not safe anymore. And like I have to run out of there. Um, but uh, but it's cool. It's got a really good uh, it's got a real good feel to it, and and it's it's relatively far along there's there's i I think feature wise everything's in there um they're they're just adding content and levels and that kind of stuff but so far so good like i was really excited for it and it was like 3.99 this weekend i mean it was cheap i mean during the steam Steam sale so uh, i think that's definitely a game for those of you that aren't sick of zombies which i think most of you are um if you're not check this game out because i think it'll be a really cool thing to play i know you don't like spreadsheets as much as me but can you like start to break down some of these zombie games just to like Maybe just like a, a piece on like the right audience, like the right type of zombie fan. This is this is this is the this is the game for you. Versus like I mean, oh, I, yeah. I was just thinking of um, you know how much time you you put into um, State of Decay as well. Yeah, like, like before State of Decay, you thought you were done with zombies, and then no room, more room in hell, and now Contagion and yeah. Um, like I don't and even... then State of Decay back because a DLC just came out for State yeah. of Decay. It gives you that open sandbox mode. And oh, is that what that is? I mean, okay, we'll talk about that. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. <laughs> it's actually, it's actually really cool. Uh, I, I kind of, re- I, I mean, playing through the story was fine, but I, I like the idea of this because there's actually like a score you can work towards. Because I got oh, to nice. a point in State of Decay on my game where I was just, I was in control, and and this is basically going to challenge you beyond that. So I'm excited to crack into that. And, and then once I get the streaming going again, that'll definitely be something I'll stream. But um, yeah, a lot of zombie stuff. I mean, Project Zomboid I've still been kind of clicking into. So, I mean, there's a lot of zombies. Zombies have made a big way. But, you know, I'm at I'm past the point of being apologetic about sure. my, my love for zombies. I like zombies. People like to shoot terrorists. There's people that, that, that will mm. shoot terrorists in every single game they play. No one complains about that. Hey, I, give me my zombies. I'd rather shoot them. They're dead. They're already dead anyway, so I don't feel as bad. I still think they need to do more like space zombies or robot zombies. They need to combine some of those. Some of those. Give I know spread spread the love around. You know, 
I don't have anything yeah. against zombies, yeah. but like zombies have just reached this ascension point where they could help bring up other other creatures with them and and and, and give them some love because uh, we're gonna forget I'm, about some I'm, of our other enemies. Well, and I'm curious why uh, so zombies have been prevalent, but what, what has happened to the zombie animals or mutant animals? Right. I mean, I like what Resident Evil did. I mean, you had That's zombies, true. but you also had this range of mutants, and you could do all kinds of stuff with it, and, and the sky was a limit. I think that we need to – zombies are great, but zombies, in my mind, will always be um, kind of uh, the the support cast. They should be the support cast, truly. Um, because e- even in Left 4 Dead, you'd say, "Oh, well, they're not—they're the main enemy." Well, Left 4 Dead, th- the main concept of that is is getting from point A to point B with your team. So that mm-hmm. cooperative aspect is like the main idea, and then the zombies are there to kind of get in your way. So I really like the idea of zombies being there, just being kind of like the choir, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you and you need something else to be what's driving everything. And we need werewolves. Why? <laughs> what the, what's happening with werewolves? I mean. Skyrim kind of had them, but I don't think I ran into a single werewolf that was not me in that game. You know, yeah. So I think Van Helsing was your know. only other touch. You played and you played that. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What was that Fang? Whatever. Um, was oh, the, oh, Sang Freud. Yep. Yeah, Last same, yeah, yeah. Over the springtime, and oh, I killed a lot of werewolves during that. And then they, and they're cool werewolves. <laughs> werewolves have something that vampires and zombies just do not have. Vampires hair. to me, well, they have a lot of hair. True, but. You know, those Jason Bateman. Zombies are relatively weak. Vampires are wayfish. They're kind of eh, there's like that romantic aspect of vampires, unless you know they're they're uh, you know Thirty Days of Night vampires, which those are badass. But no one does those because they want everything to look attractive. Werewolves are just fucking tough, man. <laughs> I mean, they just rip people's faces off. They rip their guts out. They rip their butts off. They don't give a fuck. And we need that in gaming right now. They also surf on top of cars. Do they really? Mm-hmm. And play basketball, and they're really good the boxers. And the friendly werewolf. That's that's. Uh, and they go dormant for like twenty years, and then MTV brings them back, and I won't watch that show. Uh, or they or they go dormant for three years, and then uh, uh, Scott uh, or uh, uh, Bateman. Yeah, Jason uh, Bateman. Yep. Scott Bateman. Jason Bateman. Yeah. <laughs> Scott Bateman. His his younger brother Scott. Um, Oh yeah, he comes. I, I, I think his name in the movie might be Scott, so that might redeem you a little bit. But Scott, do... his name in the movie is Scott Bateman. No, I mean just yeah. <laughs> that would be weird. Scott Fox, I believe. Scott Fox. Scott gotcha. J. Fox. <laughs> uh, getting getting off base there. Um, any other? You you wrote your uh, early access piece. Any other games you want to give a shout out to? Um, yeah, yeah, so there's there's a lot of games that I've been playing. So I, I've uh, Grim Dawn, I've been playing a little bit of that. Oh, uh, that's look, a, yeah, yeah, we actually, the last time you were on, we were going to talk about that and really didn't get to it. So tell me, tell me about Grim Dawn and how it stacks up to the other action RPGs out there. So Grim Dawn is a, you know, uh, ARPG that's uh, been created by some of the members of the Titan Quest team. Mm-hmm. And anybody that was a fan of Titan Quest, it was... It was kind of the in between, uh, from Diablo two to what we currently have, which is just a slew of isometric action RPGs. And um, I really liked Titan Quest; it was a great game. Um, didn't love the setting because I'm not Greek mythology is cool to me, but not enough that I, I got sunk into. I like that dark. I like that kind of medieval fantasy type stuff. This game is actually set in. Uh, a the Victorian era essentially, so 1800s ish. Uh, you've got guns, you've got that kind of stuff, but you're still not technologically advanced. Um, in a world that's that's in a world. G- humans are not even a factor in this situation. So there's two factions of creatures fighting, and you're just kind of surviving. Um, but that being said, you you are a human in this, and you have you've survived some horrible. Um, calamity, and you are kind of growing as a... I mean, it's not unlike the Nephilim story in Diablo 3. Like, you are the only guy that can really do anything in this world. And um, it plays a lot like Titan Quest. Um, it, it's still very in a very early stage. So it, it, I don't want to go into the technical aspect of too much except for the fact that, A, it's not a fixed camera, which is awesome. Mm-hmm. You can twirl your camera. You can You can zoom in. You can zoom out. I mean... Which is, is it a feature you need? 
not necessarily, but I like it. It's fine. I think it's a cool thing to have. Um, and it's more open. So we're not dealing with a game that's just going from point A to point B. You actually can move within these levels more so than you can in a lot of the action RPGs as of late that are more hubbish. You know, you're going, you're just connected to different um, areas and that's it. So uh, I can definitely dig that. And um, it's it's it has a, a darker feeling to it. You know, the monster, I mean, you've got your zombies and you've got your weird creatures and stuff, but I mean, it's it's really oppressive and it feels, it feels like Victorian Stalker and Diablo 2 and Titan Quest just got hmm. together and just mashed privates. Just, <laughs> that is exactly what it feels like to me. Um, and again, it's not feature complete. Uh, a lot of content they're still adding to it, but I, I like the way it feels. It's not quite as smooth as any of the other, you know, as your Path of Exiles and your Diablo 3s. Um, but it, it, I like the, I, I like, I like the concept and it's a lot more original. I mean, because I don't, I can't remember the last time we had an action RPG that came out that was um, not set in like a medieval fantasy realm. And, Good point. and that's cool because it opens a way for other people to think, oh, maybe a contemporary action RPG, which is something that I would love to have. So, um, so far I'm digging it. I've kind of taken a break from it because, you know, they're, there is a uh, uh, an end to the the amount of gameplay I can put into it at this point because mm-hmm. it, you know it is not a complete game, and I I don't want to burn myself out on it you know and then not come back to it because I think yeah. it has a heck of a lot of potential. That's the other side of the early access games that I always hit. It's just like nope, oh, I've hit my limit. I'll come back to you when you're done. Yep. But I don't know about that. It's anymore. about two. It's usually about two hours. This game I've put about maybe eight into it so working with I'm, I'm, I'm kind of experimenting not just playing the game as much as just experimenting with the different classes and that kind of stuff you can work with um and that's been cool that's been fun uh and and you know I, i'm just i'm looking forward to it because it looks like the quest system is just going to be a little bit more fleshed out and, and you're not going to feel like you're just walking down a hallway full of monsters which is which is a good thing which is what action rpg games need at this point is not to just, I mean, because if you really think about Diablo three and some of those games, I liked them, but there is that corridor, the corridor shooter feeling to them because there's not too much. You're not going to like find a different path, you yeah. know, through a maze. I mean, you're, there's a, a, a beginning and an end <laughs> even, to it. Even if they're and randomly you need to switch it up. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That was, that's what, that was like, I remember when Diablo one came out and how the randomly generated dungeons kind of blew my mind at that time. Yeah, but like at this point, yeah, there you've just kind of moved point A and point B, <laughs> and, mm-hmm. and and shuffle, mm-hmm. and it's it's funny how how jaded I've gotten about that stuff. But does uh, so yeah. does Grim- <laughs> I remember when Grim Dawn was on Kickstarter, like the artwork and stuff looked really cool. Is it is it a pretty good looking game? It, I wouldn't say it's the best looking game. It's really tough to go from Path of Exile. Okay to this because i think path of exile looks really sharp that being said it's a very detailed world much more detailed than i think path of exile is path of exile uh, reuses a lot of assets Mm -hmm. which is fine because they need to do that because you know they've got that random generation of levels and stuff um whereas this game i mean there's a lot of cool little details in there and, and and graphics are something that can always be shaped up as things go but it's not offensive i mean i just I'm not going to sell something on this game by saying, oh, it's unbelievable looking, but it's fine. It, it, it serves a purpose that it needs to serve, and I think that that's that's perfectly okay. I think that there's going to be some of these games, especially some of these indie games that are going to come out, and they aren't going to be able to compete, especially now that the next gen is up here. They're just not going to be able to compete, but they don't have to if the gameplay is there. Yep. Uh, speaking of next gen, that doesn't really have to complete. Um, I still contend the games I get right now over the last couple months... Um, or Nintendo games, because I've been playing a lot of The Legend of Zelda, A Link Between Worlds, and did you, what's your, what's your A Link to the Past experience, Sega Boy? I don't know if you made that leap or not. Oh no, A Link to the Past is my favorite game. All right, all right. Of so. that, of the, uh, I was going to say, of the 16-bit, yeah, 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 okay. at least of the Zelda series, yeah, that was my favorite, absolutely. So, I actually, <laughs> I was a little late getting the Super Nintendo, and I never... I played a little bit of A Link to the Past when I had the console. I didn't actually mm-hmm. finish the game or play it like like seriously until I emulated it later in college. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, I played 
Zelda 1 and 2, and I played, I believe I played um, the one on the Game Boy quite a bit, um, Link's Awakening, and, um, mm-hmm. and then obviously Ocarina, and I came back a- a- around at that point, but always huge fan of Zelda, just happened to miss that game, knew it was awesome, but like, had you know, it just, I was doing other, I don't know, I don't have a good excuse. So it's been weird, <laughs> because, you know, so A Link Between Worlds is their first game that is kind of a direct sequel in the in the same same worlds as a previous Zelda game, and it, I mean, it literally is that Hyrule. It's years later. They reference like this previous hero, and you know, and 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 kind of make comments al- along the lines of, well, you know, the last guy he he did this, and um, it's it's really clever in that regard. Um, but what I love the most about this is the dungeon design and. Um, the, the the big thing that's been touted is just the freedom that you have. Like, when the world opens up, mm-hmm. there are literally eight dungeons that you can go to at any point. And mm. because you have this you have this shop that you can rent any of the items in the game from, and uh, later uh, you can buy any of them at any point. And so it just basically, you will go to a dungeon and you know what that, you know, what that tool is that you need to get through a majority of the dungeon, and you, you rent that ahead of time. Or me... I just rent all of them at once and always have them on me. And if you, <laughs> so um, the penalty is if you die, you have to return them and rent them again. So it it actually encourages you to, for the first time I can ever remember, uh, it encourages you to collect rupees and actually use rupees. Like the money actually mm-hmm. can matter. So, um, but beyond that, the dun- the dungeon designs are just they're they're so awesome. They do a lot with, um, they actually do a lot with the three D. Uh, effects of the 3ds like there's a lot of verticality to the dungeons and um that really stupid looking gimmick that i did not like um when they announced the game of being able to like flatten yourself into a 2d drawing and slide along the walls looked really dumb of course of course that is implemented in the most genius ways possible like it just it really expands a lot of the puzzles of the dungeon and totally eden crow on that one because it is it is fantastic and um, I think I'm about halfway through the game game now, and I actually struggle with. I just want to blow through that game, but I'm trying to balance my live streaming too with it at the same time, and juggling too many games at once. But, but yeah, that game has absolutely floored me. And and again, I don't have as strong of a, of a nostalgic draw to a link to the past as a lot of people, but I really appreciate the 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 callbacks and the and being in that world and just playing another top down Zelda for the first time in a while, and it feels. It feels familiar, but it feels fresh at the same time. And I just think they they nailed the right formula for it, and it's going to give mm-hmm. them a good base to try new things with Zelda. So it's easily the most exciting thing out on Nintendo in, in quite a while, especially with yeah. I don't know. I was hearing a bunch of interviews with how they're just so stuck with their fans uh, uh, that that want something new, but don't want you to change too much at the same time. And it's just like there's no mm-hmm. way you can win, and. Um, this may prove to be kind of a, a, a master stroke um, when it all when it's all said and done. So um, this is this is the game I'm most excited to play at, at any given point right now. I was gonna say it would take. It, it sounds like it would take a game like this for me to get excited about. Not, not, I, I sometimes knock Nintendo and I shouldn't, and that, that's a rude thing to do. Um, but I just I haven't been excited about a Nintendo game you know i haven't been like excited about i have no reason to really get the wii u uh, the 3ds um for the most part there wasn't a whole lot of games that i really wanted but this game sounds really really appealing to me because i i love to link to the past and i would do um i, I want to play it again like i want to emulate it and jump back into it because that was a i, I mean i remember that game vividly and I, and I think that any sort of throwback to anything is is perfect for me and that may be a gateway drug for me to get into um, Nintendo again, though I don't know how how I'm telling easily you, so you hold on to me. We did our little like game of the year preview to try to figure out which games we still need to play. Mm-hmm. 3DS is pretty strong ass lineup too. If you start diving into it, so yeah. it's dangerous dangerous yeah. territory. Um, yeah, yeah. And then I, you know, I can't say enough about Super Mario 3D World either. But it's it's hard to even say anything new about that game. But it is. Yeah. Like, I loved Super Mario 3D Land. I like this. I've always liked the Super Mario Galaxy games with their, you know, their their small, smaller world approaches to their platforming. Like, it just, the the level the level design allows them to, rather than, like, going a big open world 
of like the Mario 64s, like coming up with these reasons why this the Mushroom King is so disjointed, like these isolated platforms and um, mm-hmm. just I don't know. It, they've they've come up with a reason for this world to be kind of so disjointed that it, it makes the gameplay fun. And um, yeah, um, so I love the perspective. It's really fun. I played a good chunk of a co-op with. Uh, uh, with Megan, and she's still played much more of the game than I have. So, um, but you know, the fact that there's a power up that lets you multiply how many characters you have on screen. I was running around with <laughs> I put the highlight video up. I was running around with five Luigi's and just laughing my ass off because it's just <laughs> it, it's just it's just fun. And again, it's it's Nintendo at their best. I still think Zelda is the more innovative of the two games and will be the more memorable mm-hmm. of them. But this is like. This is the, this is the time to buy the Nintendo stuff that's out now. Like I don't really know yeah. where Nintendo's going beyond this year, but they've got enough to, uh, you you, you couldn't you can't really go wrong buying up their games at this point. This is kind of the, mm-hmm. you know, the Wii U has enough to, to warrant a purchase at this point. I feel and, 3D World is is, really strong, really fun, and surprisingly, um, um you know it'll it'll. I'd be surprised if both both those games don't end up in my top ten. So, mm. well, how cool. Plus cats, yeah. you know, cats. cats. That's that's really my only other pitch to you is that there's cats. <laughs> that's everyone. Everyone tries to find common ground with me, and they just refer to my two my two close friends that live with me and cuddle with me and poop on my shit. <laughs> so my um, my indie surprise lately, uh, Josh brought this game up. And I thought he was making up words um, on our uh, preview for Games of the Year. Um, but Valdis Story, Abyssal City. What's that do for Whoa. you? There you go. There you go. Um, uh, so it's Metroid. It's a Metroidvania game. And okay. Metroidvania game um, looks like it just like has really a really strong art style that was reminiscent a little bit of dust and Elysian tale from last year except more mm. more pix more, pic, more pixelated characters than um, the kind of watercolor vector quality that um, painted quality that uh, dust had but so when I glanced at it that's what it reminded me of was was dust I love dust I think it is uh, an amazing story and just a really well thought out universe. It's got some pacing issues, though. Valda's story just throws you right in. Um, mm. I like the fact that I cut, like th- the music uh, kind of pulled me in right off the bat. It's got kind of classical stuff with chunky metal guitars going on. Very Castlevania vibe from its music music for me, uh, which, you know, name my damn site after that series. So let's uh, <laughs> um, take that for, for what you will. But um, the action in this game feels great. Um, you're running around. It's basically a angels versus demons type of scenario but it's in an, an, a, a universe where the angels are also dicks so you're a human that lands in this <laughs> for a human that lands in this foreign land of other humans that don't know who you are they send you a bunch of errands where you're trying to find your your lost crewmates and you've got your sword and shield and you're doing battle and it's got a really nice uh, feel to its gameplay platforming and, and combo systems for fighting and then it's also got a pretty well developed magic system with a lot of different combinations of elements so you can mix up your spells really nicely and then um, skill points for leveling up attributes and also a skill tree for um, leveling up your character and using different skills. Oh wow. That's much, pretty complete. Yeah, much deeper than I expected. Like I kept saying on the live stream that with indie games, I, I, I still if I know it's a small team, I think they're gonna they're gonna excel at one or two things. They're either gonna have a you know a great concept and or great art or or great music or great gameplay. They're not gonna have a package of all of them, but this one mm-hmm. seems to have that. And I really struggled to put it down because um, on top of all this, all the boss fights were really fun and really unique uh, among among each other. And um, I can't I can't say enough about this game. Josh brought it up. I played it and I had to show it off, and I'm still kind of obviously raving about it. So um, check out Valda's story I, that, if you haven't this year, because I was gonna say I haven't even uh, I hadn't heard of it. What's it out on right now? It's out on it's out on PC. Um, so oh, it is on PC. They oh, really, excellent. Oh, great. Yeah. yeah, they released it to Desura in September, and it just came to Steam, and then you can also buy it directly from them. So how did I miss? How did 
Because you missed it. You missed it because just like I did, because there was a flood of Metroidvania games that hit Kickstarter. And they all started kind of looking yeah. the same. Like I remember like I remember Chasm. Um that was the one that really got my attention initially, but I think there were yeah. there were a couple more. And then again, with a name like Valdis Story just doesn't resonate at all. I can't even after Josh mm. told me what the game was, I couldn't find it because I couldn't remember the name. And so yeah. that's why I'm trying to, you know, put it out there a little bit more because I, I believe it slipped by a lot of people that um, would otherwise really enjoy the game. So check it out. Yeah, I'm mean, gonna gonna have to jump on that. That sounds great. Um, and lastly, here games wise, um, so. When I bought the PS4, I whittled it down to I was getting Killzone as my next gen experience, and I kind of wanted a sports game. I don't know where that came from. I don't. I play sports games every few years. Hadn't played FIFA in forever, so I ended up getting FIFA. Um, but FIFA is missing a feature because I'm an idiot and don't realize it's not a World Cup FIFA game, so I can't do the international play. Which, as a not really a soccer fan from America, like I just want to take the mm-hmm. I just want to take the U.S. to the World Cup. Like I don't have any, I don't have any attachment to these club teams. It's plenty deep enough yeah. for everybody that's, um, that's out there. But I've kind of, because I can't easily jump into these international matches. I kind of lost attention to it. And I was also just kind of sitting back and looking at all the reviews, saying that, you know, out of all the next gen sports games, NBA 2K14 like sports the best graphics and it's like the most polished gameplay experience. So I end up downloading NBA 2K14. Plus, I also wanted to try to download one of those games just to see how the PlayStation Network did, which mm-hmm. it did great once it was up because then I realized I actually tried to download it the day it launched in Europe, and PSN was just – it was kind of screwed for a couple days, but it's since then come yeah. back to normal. So Anyway, I think the last NBA 2K – well, the last basketball game I played was probably – man – I don't even know if I played a 2K game on the 360 this year. Um, it might have been last gen, but like I just have not liked basketball simulators since I don't know NBA Live '95. <laughs> like I played some of the NBA Street games, but that was, you know, that's as close as I got. I had no interest in doing the, any of these yeah. sims, but you know, like I said earlier, the Pacers are good. I've got a team I can attach myself to. I've been following the NBA mm-hmm. a little bit more in the last couple of years, so jumped into that and played a couple games with my friends locally. It was it's. It's a lot of fun. Looks great. It's a basketball game. But they have a career mode. And so I played basketball for like 10 years um, before I figured out I'm not going to even grow to be six foot tall. You might as well give up on any sort of dream related (laughs) to basketball. And I don't know. I just my competitive side didn't kind of work with basketball culture would be the way I would describe Mm -hmm. it at the time. And um, but I always liked I always love create a character modes in any sports game and I like trying to recreate myself and throw myself into league and you know it's always funny for me to make a five eight white guy that you know has the best dunking skills in the league and that kind of thing that's what I used to do in my teams <laughs> but anyway so I was I was just kind of creating uh, my style of player which is you know somebody that's I'm short, I'm fast, I can steal the ball, I can pass really well, and I can shoot three pointers. That's what I want my guy to be. But he's not going to be the mm-hmm. stud, you know. He's he's going to be he's going to be a good little point guard, but he's not going to be the stud. So I lo- I load up the game, kind of create my character, um, and you know, kind of kind of I thugged him out a little bit, but just you know, just to have some fun. And it starts this my career mode that looks like you know it's written by. I don't know. They have like an entire script and it's acted out by I feel like a Hollywood writer attempted to write this story. And it tells the story wow. of your basketball your basketball player that gets discovered just in time gets discovered on the streets just in time to jump into the rookie showcase. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. yeah. On the streets? Like you okay, not actually on the streets cuz I believe you're actually shooting hoops on like a rooftop basketball court. It feels like you're on top of a building <laughs> in a city, but you're definitely not on the ground cuz yeah, it was it was kind of strange. But he was not, not in like a sky fortress of some kind. He was not like in the, the gym. College player. Right. He <laughs> was not in the gym. He wasn't like a former college player. He's like literally out on the streets and his agent like best friend buddy comes in and he's like, "Dude, we've got the invite." And Anyway, the dialogue in this game, 
let's just say it is it is a very stereotypical basketball player. It's like part of the basketball culture that has like driven me away. The way that it's written and who it's written to appeal to just yeah. It isn't my thing. It was like really uncomfortable for me to experience, but it was also like a train wreck that I couldn't turn away from. So I kept playing it. Um, but I became, you know, I became frustrated because like, like they're trying to just make you this stud basketball player that wants to be the best guy in the league, and he has certain personality traits. Like he's super competitive. Like would, you know, it's just as soon fight the guy that's his rival then beat him on the court like it always seems like this guy's on the verge of also beating the guy up and i just didn't like kind of how they're pigeonholing the character versus all the you know because it starts to like you see some of it starts to like bleed into some rpg elements where you've got dialogue choices like you do so you start off you do you you start off you do the rookie showcase you play your game it grades you and then you have to do like pre-draft interviews with other NBA teams and you're answering questions from their scouts and you've got a rival guy that you want to try to be drafted higher than or he's going to make fun of you and he's going to obviously stay you know, in your life throughout your career and that kind of thing. And it's really like really drawn out but also just really narrowly focused because it's like if you're going to do this for me, I want to be able to like I can't make a you know, a Larry Bird. I can't make a Tim Duncan. I can't make like you know, a laid back kind of nice guy basketball player. You ha- you like it has it is one stereotype that they're going after, and that it was uh, kind of off putting. But also, I kind of got into it by the end of it. What I just you know, it's so funny. Is everyone is just like, oh, why is everyone made out to look like thugs? And like everyone is because it's because everyone's made out to look like thugs. That's yeah. like everybody wants every like what where what happened to that that Indiana boy. It- that those that you know has his hoop dreams. Well, I mean, he can like, shoot well. He's not going to talk much. He's going to put. He's going to send all of his money back home to mama because dad died two years earlier. Farm's going to hell, and he's got. He doesn't want. To, he wants I mean, to farm. It, he's a farmer in Harvard. He's got some skills. If you're going to make a, if you're going to make a story mode, go back to the movie Blue Chips and just take all the star players from from that game. You've got like five archetype characters to work with. Yeah, and but it's like. But at the same time, I'm thinking. At, at, at the same time, I'm thinking, yeah, if they're only letting you do this narrow focus, this one type of character. But if they, and I was like, but that's going to appeal to a majority of people that play this game. I was like, if they made an NBA game in 2013 with me as the target audience, that game wouldn't sell for shit. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't. No, <laughs> so, it really wouldn't. It really wouldn't. So by the um, by the end, I was just kind of laughing at it. But it was it was. It, it was surreal, I guess, is the way to put it. So, so if you had an NBA RPG, and instead of uh, character classes, you had these archety- archetypes that, mm-hmm. that you talked about, what, what would we have? So we have uh, soft-spoken Midwestern white boy. Yeah. Uh, the general thug. Mm-hmm. Um, we have the uh I want the, the foreign really guy. tall yeah the really little, tall foreign little, guy that's really uncoordinated but really R- tall really uncoordinated but just a beast mm-hmm. you know beast up front i think that's a basketball the, the air up I there know. i don't really watch basketball um and then you've got the the real like the real classy real like you know quick witted always on the ball guy mhm and then you have the uh, the veteran that should have retired a long time ago, <laughs> and his knee is about to give out, but he's just he's unwilling unwilling to give up give up his dream of finally getting the championship. I think that's all you have. I think that's pretty. I think. I think and throw in one of the members of the Toon Squad, and I think you got it. <laughs> that's what we need. <laughs> we need a Space Jam game that's way better than the Space Jam game that was released, like a like a true Space Jam game. And throw that's... in the Monstars. Could you? Is there like a cheat code wait, that you wait, can get in there wait. that you can play as the Monstars? I believe in the last two weeks on our Tumblr page, I posted a video of, it was actually NBA 2K13, somebody made a Space Jam mod. Really? That's yeah. awesome. Like, in a ca- character model changed, oh, it was, it was, it, it was also surreal, I would say. But Yeah, um, that's awesome. Kudos oh. to them. I mean, I'm going to keep playing that game because it's addictive as hell. And I think Andy, Cole, and I all have it, and we're going to do a tournament online, and we'll stream some of that stuff. Andy's actually been streaming his career mode and been going through the same kind of, what the hell am I watching and playing? This is so yeah. bizarre. But, um, 
But yeah, it had been a while since I played a career mode in a sports game, and they decided to write a story for it that probably would work on an episode of uh, uh, Friday Night Lights or one of, yeah, one of those other shows. So it was uh, Teen Moms. Yeah, well, I don't know. That's another show that Friday Night Lights meets Teen like Moms. That. That's I think that's the audience they're going for. So. <laughs> Um, I don't really want to go into new releases, but is there anything like the Steam sales kind of going on and any other last minute pickups you're planning on making uh, in the coming weeks before the end of the year? No, I'm done. Um, we've got the uh, Starbound beta, mm-hmm. which is uh, yep. going to be out tomorrow for those that pre-ordered. Um, and that is kind of what I'm focused on. Uh, the Wasteland 2 beta supposedly out within the next few weeks. Not 100% sure on that, but um, there have been reports that that's the case. So those are the two hotly anticipated games um, that I have been looking at. Other than that, no, I think that uh, I am I am set. I don't. I'm not even. I was a little bit concerned going home uh, and not having access to a computer that I was going to miss out on oh, the winter sure, Steam yeah. sale. But I don't need to worry about it because no. there's not. I, I mean, I'm fine. I'm fine on games. I'm stocked up on games, and I'm <clears throat> happy to have some beefy games coming up that I'm going to be putting a ton of time into. So uh, I'm I'm feeling good right now. Assuming that you don't get addicted to Dota 2, which I know could happen at any moment. So I, in (laughs) fact, took that off my computer. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Because I watched a Dota 2 video on YouTube, and I just thought, this will never be for me. (laughs) I have to literally play it with someone. I'm sure someone could convince me, but it'll never be for me. Um... So I've been on the lookout for a few games that I want to touch before the end of the year, namely Gone Home. That was on 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 sale, so I yeah. need to play that. I need to play Anti Chamber, um, the Swapper, Gunpoint's coming up, uh, Mag Runner. Those are kind of the indie games. Um, mm-hmm. I still need to get Enemy Within and A Burial at Sea from Bioshock Infinite, um, and play that through those before the end of the year. I also still want to go back and play One Late Night and. Um, Amnesia, uh, Machine yep. for Pigs, because I kind of forgot about that. And then Tear Away, that's my other big mobile game. That's the that's the Vita game mm-hmm. that I gotta play. So, yeah. um, I think those were the big the big standouts. That let's see, what else did I actually? What else did I purchase? I pick, picked up Teleglitch. That was also on my on my list. Oh, that's a fun game. That's a that's a it's a tough game. That game is punishing as hell, but I've really enjoyed that game. Um, oh yeah, man. Double check them. So too many games. I, I I haven't. There haven't been too many. Um, <laughs> shit. So there have been too many uh, Steam sale purchases for me yet. I did buy Bullet Storm for PC because it was nine dollars. And did you? Yeah, I still haven't finished that yet. Oh, and then uh, Risk Risk of Rain. That was the other indie game that. Oh, I rec I recommend it. I really do. That's actually re- I I uh, I wanted to talk. I forgot to talk about that, but yeah, Risk of Rain is a cool game. It really is. I like what they're doing with it. Well, I'll try to play it's that. Tough. Now. It's tough, but it's it's fun. I'll try to play that in the next week so we can discuss it next time. I think we've got. Yeah. We'll have one more show. Yeah. We'll come back the set. We won't. We. We won't be back next week, but we will be back the 17th for probably our final Night Force episode of the year because uh, the holidays mash right up against our, our normal Tuesday nights. And then after the new year, it's looking like we're going to do our our Grimmies eight-hour deliberations podcast um, mm-hmm. featuring drinks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but before we get out of here, let's let's... Let's knock out another batch of, of game pitches. I actually started writing down an NBA game for me, but again, that would not sell. <laughs> any, I wouldn't sell it. That'd be so boring. Like, yeah, the the nice point guard that is really good at passing. <laughs> oh, could you call it? Could you call that? I mean, that's a good name for a game. The really nice point guard that's really good at passing. <laughs> <laughs> Dot net. This is the Windy City. So. Oh man, oh, that would be great though. Um, so something that came up last night, and um, I wanted Aaron to be on here for this, but I'm gonna go ahead and run with it. Um, we we were talking about a Phoenix Wright, uh, the the lawyer game for the uh, DS and 3DS, um, a Phoenix Wright Connect game, which I neither one you or I have played a Phoenix Wright game, but um, I do remember I do I do know of the 
many images of him dramatically pointing and yelling objection. Yeah, he points so, a lot. It's if, pretty rude. So a lawyer, a lawyer connect game, or maybe even a a voice command law and order game would be where I would start. Or at least the law, like, mm. what if like be like the like an old school uh, CD ROM game where you essentially get I'm picturing the the low res video episode of of a Law and Order for, of all the investigation stuff. I've just been watching a lot of SVU lately, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but then then they cut to the actual uh, court scene, and you get to do the voice commands for that to like essentially yell objection or a bunch of lawyer commands to see if you can change. Um, uh, change what's going on. Maybe you don't. I don't think the connects smart enough for you to like. Although it would be. No, I'm changing. My, I'm changing this because you'll appreciate this better. Some sort of connect game that judges how dramatic your speech is, like a game where you. I was gonna say. I, I, I wondered how many law terms or how, the yeah. concept of law you could inject in the connect. Because here's what I was thinking. If the Kinect is capable of being a uh, objective judge, then we need to be a lot more concerned about the Kinect because that's not a good thing. But but drama, I feel like, is a very important part of, of I mean, law and order especially, but like at courtroom scenes. I've never been to court, though. Like, have you been to court before? No, I haven't even gotten called in jury. I don't know if it's really like that. Because on TV, it seems really boring. It feels like the lawyers are just kind of like, well, uh, my client made a mistake we'd like you to be not, you know it's not as it's not like in the tv where it's like you <laughs> won't understand macho you know man like you see that is yeah we, my, the, the macho man randy savage's 2013 court uh justice <laughs> bonanza uh god rest your soul randy god rest your soul oh Oh, uh, but I what if dig that though? I think that would be good. I mean, could you do? Could you? I know there was those movie, uh, the movie games where you had to quote the movies or whatnot. I mm-hmm. mean, but if you could, if you could make it so that like it's not just about how accurate you are, but how dramatic you are, uh, that would be cool. Or if, or if you know, it gave you, it challenged you to have a courtroom scene and like it, like the, the screen would pop up with who you were within that scene and like what your motivations were, and then like find a way to kind of like get close to that so like you know you're a southern lawyer you know um you're you know also a southern lawyer and then <laughs> and your and your and your client happens to be southern and everyone in this law room you're courtroom. defending this southern lawyer southern. <laughs> the judge used to be a southern lawyer yeah but now he's a southern judge and we need you to play all the parts but none of yeah. them can sound the same <laughs> Go. It could be either the greatest party game or the party game that someone walks in and, and finally decides that they need to take you into a special treatment facility yeah. as you're screaming in different southern dialects at, at the connect, trying to decide whether or not your client, which does not exist, is guilty. I like it. I dig it. I'm but in. I don't I've never played Phoenix Wright, but I'm in. I bought this game already. But I'm also starting to like picture like the scenario where. It's more of a um, an improv an improv game that um, uh-huh. I'm even picturing like it can be judged online. But I, I I pictured this sad scenario of this 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 former like drama club president that just never got the got the social skills to um, get into an actual improv group and you know and and do some flash mobs and get out there and actually perform in the theater. So they are just performing in their living room by themselves for this online crowd, not using playroom though. That would no, that's that's too far. Yeah. But but I, but I kind of want like now that the connect can actually understand our voice commands, I I kind of want it to start judging us and using some mm-hmm. <laughs> some um, some criticism of of our performance, and that would really turn video game journalism on its head though. Actually, it's like you're. If it actually told you you were playing the game wrong, and and fought back for the game, um, yeah. But no, no, an, an improv game where the connect is the the connect is your is your judge, and um, maybe one of those scenes is the the, the courtroom scene. So I don't know I where we, it. I don't know where we ended up, but um, that's how you get on Saturday Night Live in the year twenty twenty. Count yeah. <laughs> mark it down. Oh, all right. Uh, what do you got? I mean, I don't know. I was kind of thinking about um, 
there's a lot of animal slaughtering going on in video games, and we've talked about this before in the past. And and I, I personally I enjoy hunting animals in video games, um, but uh, uh, in talking about saving the sea turtles, I, I I thought about a news story that I actually had read about these special forces in Africa that are protecting elephants and rhinos. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because poaching, I mean, I mean, we, I think there's a subspecies of rhino that went extinct like two weeks ago, and basically, at the rate that things are going, we could elephants could be extinct. I mean, just all these magnificent That's animals awesome. can be gone. I mean, it, it it could be sad. But what if you are like the ultra commando defense squad for the animals, as opposed to in every single game where you hunt and kill the animals, now you are friends with the animals. Now you, now the animals rely on you, and I, and I, and, and, you know, I, I see the opening, opening scene, this elephant, <laughs> and he's running, man, he's running his ass off, and you see these dudes, real slimy looking fuckers, man, real slimy, in this jeep, kind of heckling it, shooting it right at its toes, you know, like just so that you know the elephant knows. The rednecks of the savannah. Scared exactly, and they're shooting at it, and like. And then finally, the elephant is like backed up against a, some sort of wall, probably a mountain. I'm not sure. And they're like, "Oh, we got you, elephant!" And then suddenly, and like the guy is like, "Where's my buddies at?" And like they're all just dead. And then you are just sitting there, like the wildlife, the wildlife protector, just with like cool gloves on that look like lion hands, and you're just taking people out. And the wow. elephant looks at you and it's like, "Whoa." Thanks, bro. And you're like, no problem. Because in this game, you can talk to animals, and they can help you as much as you help them. And it's basically you. You're basically like uh, Aquaman, but you talk to animals instead. Like, oh, like like uh, like the kid from Captain Planet, the little the little South American kid. What's his mm-hmm. name? Haji. No, not Haji. That was from Johnny Quest. Um, I know who you're talking about. He has Haji? heart. He has heart, right? He's got heart, but instead of just having heart, you've got muscles and lion hands. Lion not hands. real lion hands, but no, just... No, no, I was going to say... Have. As long as your special powers are related to the animal powers of the animals you are protecting. Yeah. So. That would be awesome. You're like an animal spirit and you are helping. But so you've got allies. So you've got like the park rangers are trying to help out. And your whole goal is just like kill all of these poachers and and protect the animals. And I just just imagine a big Lord of the Rings epic scene where all of the animals of the jungle are just coming together to attack like this big stronghold and like elephants and rhinos and then even animals that we don't even know exist because I, they found like 15 new animals in like the last week and just just getting in there just smashing balls. I also because you know ele- because elephants want to smash some balls because yes. they're sick of getting killed. Ivory's not that important. We can make plastic shit. Don't you know ivory's bad. If you're wearing ivory shoes right now, you're an asshole. Just so no. everyone knows. No, I, I, elephants want to smash balls because there was that one asshole elephant friend of theirs that they used to have that got taken off to the circus because he could balance on a ball and none of the other ones uh, could. So that's why they hate mm-hmm. balls. Um, <laughs> but uh, this all also sounds like the next spinoff of Far Cry 3. I feel like... Well, because... Because the original Far Cry's, you had these like animal powers, and those went away, and those went into crisis. And so now let's bring it back. Let's bring those animal powers back. Let's bring back the animals. But let's be friends with the animals. I mean, I'm like, I don't know. I'm looking at some of our recommended titles for this: Doctor True Little Elephant Commando Three, Saving Private <laughs> Elephant is uh, probably my 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 particular favorite. Oh man, there is going to be some dramatic. There's going to be some dramatic storyline around the uh, the ivory tusks, I'm sure. Um, oh, absolutely. Oh man, that I, I like. You know, we've we've had like animal based ideas before, but the thing is, like you can do all the spinoffs or all all of like it just seems to like grow infinitely because you can just base it off of certain animal species and just then move on to the next one. Like you could have just mm-hmm. just the elephant game. Um, this may be our most well thought out game pitch of the year, <laughs> which reminds me, we should probably vote on that for the Grimmies. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Is that is yeah. that self serving? <laughs> to like, <laughs> come up with awards for our own stuff. Yeah, presenting. I, I'm just waiting for the day that somebody somebody stumbles across one of our game pitches and is like, you know what? That's actually kind of a good idea. And then we get contact. I mean, I just wait for the day that Val Kilmer calls us back. 
Well, okay, let's, can you have Allie? instead of like writing these down and mailing them to myself, I've just been posting them on YouTube. So I think it works the same way. Gotcha. Gotcha. So if anybody makes a uh, a, a yelling at your connect law SVU game mm-hmm. or a white guy basketball game mm-hmm. for Justin that no one's gonna like, he's a uh, nice go ahead he's and, a nice and boy and a good passer. <laughs> nice boy goes to church every Sunday, doesn't curse. Yeah, that'll be good. That'll be good. He's really good at free throws. Don't forget that. <laughs> Terrible at everything else. Oh man. Right, that's it for the nice night for us tonight. Uh, thanks, everybody, for joining us. We'll be back again in two weeks on December 17th uh, for probably our final show of the year. And then stay tuned for more Game of the Year coverage uh, from HorribleNight.com. And we will see you next time. Later on. <laughs>